from high-altitude surveillance to pocket-sized kamikazes. Here as the weapons and ideas shaping modern battlefields in 2025. After a pause, U.S. RQ-4B Global Hawk strategic surveillance flights have resumed over the Black Sea. These long-endurance, high-altitude drones provide wide-area intelligence and have returned to the region to monitor naval and ground movements. Why does this matter? Global Hawks collect signals and imagery covering an area the size of a city block, giving commanders early warning and pattern-of-life data. It's a force multiplier before boots or warships even move. As threats evolve, so do the defenses. Textron is pitching the AT-6 Wolverine, a low-cost manned light attack platform, as an interceptor for long-range kamikaze drones like the Shahed family. The idea is to use an affordable, fast-to-field aircraft to hunt down cheap, massed threats. The pros and cons? A piloted AT-6 brings human judgment and existing logistics, but its flight costs and vulnerability to modern air defenses are trade-offs compared to unmanned interceptors. Meanwhile, the battlefield is shrinking. Turkey's STM company has fielded the Alpagu, a small, switchblade-style loitering munition built for portability and precision strikes. This light, soldier-carried system can be used in both autonomous and remote modes. Weighing around 2 kilograms with a small warhead, it has an endurance of about 15 minutes and a range of up to 8 kilometers. Tiny, cheap, and precise, the Alpagu is the kind of system that changes tactics at the squad and platoon level. On the other side of the size spectrum, Griffin Aerospace has introduced the MQM-172 Arrowhead, a flexible one-way aerial system marketed for both target and strike roles. It's configurable for heavier payloads with options for up to a 100-pound warhead and launches via catapult or truck-mounted systems. Operationally, systems like the Arrowhead aim to replicate or counter the threat posed by long-range, cheap loitering munitions where size, range, and launch footprint matter more than sophistication. Looking to the future, General Atomics has teased a concept, an MQ-20 Avenger fitted with a high-energy laser in its nose. The rendering suggests a future where high-altitude drones can perform precision, speed-of-light defensive and offensive tasks. But let's do a reality check. Directed energy technology is advancing but power, cooling, and beam control remain hard problems. This concept signals intent more than an in-service reality for now. Countermeasures are also getting denser. China has deployed a new short-range air defense system, often referred to as the HQ-13. Sources suggest it's a point defense interceptor capable of engaging small aircraft cruise missiles, and drones out to roughly 18 kilometers. Point defense systems like the HQ-13 show how layered defenses are becoming a key factor against low-cost aerial weapons. On the ground, a photo circulating this month shows China SPLZ-051B, a tracked 155mm self-propelled howitzer with an automated loader and a reduced crew of apparently just two soldiers. The trend is clear. Automation and smaller crew sizes in large artillery systems. What does that mean? Faster rates of fire, shorter crew exposure on the battlefield, and easier integration with digital fire control networks. Adaptation is also key. Ukraine's Raven air defense launcher, which uses modified ASRAM missiles in a ground-based role, has been credited with intercepting multiple Russian cruise missiles including recent shootdowns of KH-59s and a KH-101. Repurposing air-to-air -air missiles for ground launch is fast, cost-effective, and shows how allies can adapt existing stocks to meet urgent needs. Behind the front lines, industrial partnerships are crucial. Hanwha Aerospace and GE Aerospace recently signed a major agreement. GE will supply 88 T700 turboshaft and 40 F404 turbofan engine kits, 
which Hanwha will assemble and test in South Korea. This is a big step for their local industrial capability and sustainment, strengthening supply chains and helping Seoul scale production of helicopters and light jets domestically. So, what does this all mean? There are two big takeaways. First, low-cost offensive systems, from tiny 2-kilogram loitering munitions to 100-pound one-way vehicles, continue to multiply, forcing defenders to adapt fast. Second, defenders are responding across the board. Legacy platforms are being retasked, like the Raven, manned aircraft are being repurposed, like the AT-6, and high-tech concepts like lasers are being developed in parallel. Expect continual churn. The battlefield is now an ecosystem of drones, sensors, and hybrid countermeasures. If you found this useful, like and subscribe and drop a comment. Which of these systems do you think will change the next conflict? Thanks for watching.